theory of Mobius inversion is best understood in terms of the incidence algebra of a partially ordered set. So let P be a partially ordered set. Then uh, its incidence algebra is, uh, well, firstly, we'll define it as a vector space. It's a space of all functions f from p cross p to uh, the ring of complex numbers. Now, we can replace these complex numbers by any other uh, unital commutative ring, but uh, for simplicity in this course, I'll just assume that we have complex numbers and that suffices for most of our purposes. And uh, there's an additional condition on these functions. Uh, if this function takes a non-zero value at x comma y, then we need that x is less than or equal to y in the partially ordered set. So this is a C vector space. Uh, under pointwise addition, And what we'll do now is uh, we will introduce a multiplication of this set given f and g in AP define f star g, the product of f and g in AP by f star g of x comma y uh, is defined to be the sum of all z belonging to p f of x comma z g of z comma y so this formula should remind you a little bit of matrix multiplication and we'll see in a moment that it is really a form of matrix multiplication note that not every element z of p contributes to the sum on the right hand side the only elements z that contribute are uh, that possibly contribute are the ones uh, which satisfy x less than or equal to z less than or equal to y because f and g are in ap and so these factors here would be zero unless we had at least one of these factors would be zero unless we had these conditions satisfied uh, but this definition will not really make sense uh, unless this is a finite sum so uh, we could just work with finite post sets or we could uh, put another condition of post sets simply insisting that these sets are finite. So let me add a condition here. Let's say locally finite post set. And let me give you the definition of locally finite post set. A post set P is said to be locally finite if the set y in p such that x is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to z is finite for all x and z in p. Okay, so this multiplication only makes sense for locally finite post sets. Otherwise, you'll get into all these issues with convergence and we don't really want to deal with that. Now, I claim that star is an associative product. Uh, meaning that if you take f, g, and h in um, AP, then f star g star h is equal to f star g star h. And this is a fairly routine calculation, um, but since it's a new concept, let me just work it out for you. So we have, uh, let's start with the left hand side, for example, f star g star h and let's evaluate it at uh, some point x comma y okay so by definition uh, this is sum over z in p and here we must take f star g of 
x comma z into h of z comma y that's just the definition of uh, multiplication which i've given up here and then now let's expand this f star g and so this gives uh, u belonging to so firstly we have z in p and then we have u in p and we have f of x comma u g of u comma z h of z comma y so this sum is over all uh, u and z that lie between x and y this is really a sum over all x less than or equal to u less than or equal to z less than or equal to y and you can easily show that uh, this is the same uh, reverse the order of uh, addition and so on uh, i'll leave you to work it out or you could start from the right hand side and show that this is exactly what you get when you also look at f star g star h of x comma y okay so that's the proof so what uh, we say is that star is um, an associative uh, ap is an associative action And uh, we can ask whether this algebra has a multiplicative unit or not. And a little thought, uh, you will easily see that the multiplicative unit is the following. Um, be defined by um, actually, <coughs> let me denote this by delta. That's also a common notation. Uh, delta of x comma y is 1 if x is equal to y and 0 otherwise. This certainly satisfies the condition that if delta x y is not equal to 0 then x is less than or equal to 1. So this is an element of AP and uh, what you can show is that delta is a multiplicative unit. i.e. for every f in AP we have one star f is equal to f and that is also equal to f star oops delta is equal to f star delta. So delta is the multiplicative unit of the associative algebra AP. We can say that AP is a unital associative algebra an associative algebra with a multiplicative unit. Okay, let's look at some examples. So the first example, let's just take P to be uh, the post set N consisting of integers from one to N with the usual order. So if F belongs to AP, Let's let f i j equal to f of i comma j for all i j in a p. So now having written it like this, uh, I can think of this as a matrix. So you form the matrix f equals f i j. Now the condition, this is a this is an n by n matrix, and the condition that f i j not equal to zero implies that i is less than or equal to j means that f is um, upper triangular matrix. And what we have uh, from matrix multiplication is that the i jth element of the product of two matrices f and g so let's say f capital f is the matrix coming from a function f and capital g is coming from uh, where g i j is g of i comma j for some element g i j uh, g in a p 
So then this is given by the sum over all k, f of i k, uh, g of k j for all uh, i and j. So what this means is that matrix multiplication just becomes the star product f of i comma k g of k comma j which is f star g of i comma k. So what we have is that f maps to f. This gives rise to an isomorphism. from AP or in this case more specifically AN to the C algebra uh, of upper triangular matrices. Let's look at another example. And this time, let's take P again to be the same set, but with a different order. So let's take P to be the set 1 to N. Uh, I'll avoid the use of uh, N with square, bra uh, square brackets here because the partial order will be different with what is called the anti-chain order. Now, uh, what this is is, uh, on any set, you can put an anti-chain partial order where you say that x is less than or equal to y if and only if x is equal to y. So this is the partial order with the fewest possible uh, relations. And uh, now if f belongs to AP, then uh, f i j not equal to 0 if and only if i is equal to j. So the only uh, 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 values of f that are non-zero are the ones of the form f of i comma i. And so you can regard a p as uh, the algebra of diagonal n by n matrices. The partially ordered set N described in the previous example is called the chain and it's the other extreme from uh, this partially ordered set which is called the anti-chain of size N. Now let's look at an um, example which is something in between. Uh, for definiteness, de definiteness, let me just take uh, an example where I describe the partial order using its Hasser diagram, just three elements, one, two, and three. One is less than or equal to three. Two is also less than or equal to three, but one and two are incomparable. So now given F in AP, form the matrix. It'll be a three by three matrix. Uh, f equal to f i j. So now here there are only um, a few possible values that you can fill out in this matrix uh, f 1 1 of course but um, f 1 2 uh, has to be 0 because 1 is not less than or equal to 2. So there will be a 0 here and then f 1 3 0 f 2 2 f2, 3, 0, 0, f1, 3. And uh, you can easily check that all matrices of this, this form, of this shape, that is, which have, which are upper triangular and have a 0 in the first row, second column, these form an algebra. That is, uh, they're closed under multiplication. You multiply two matrices like this, their product will again be a matrix like this. What we have is that AP is isomorphic to the algebra of upper triangular matrices with 
with trivial one, two, and three. Okay, and uh, now you must have guessed that we can actually do this uh, with any uh, finite partially ordered set. So, um, given a finite partially ordered set P in general, uh, first thing you need to do is number its elements. as p1, p2, pn, let's say it has n elements in such a way that so the important thing here is that uh, if pi is less than or equal to pj then we must have that i appears before j in this uh, numbering uh, elements. So we've done this in the previous example. We have uh, the post set with three elements and they actually came numbered to us. So P1 could be the element 1, P2 is the element 2, P3 is the element 3. And we see that uh, Pi is less than or equal to Pj implies I is less than or equal to J. There are two ways to number this post set here, but there's only one way to uh, number this post set in such a manner. Think about it. And also it's not completely obvious that every finite post set can be numbered in this way. Uh, you should also think about why that is true, maybe find an algorithm to find such a numbering. Uh, in this, I suppose, um, minimal elements will be your friends. Okay, so now what you can do is you can define an embedding, uh, just an injective linear map. Uh, into uh, the algebra of upper triangular n by n matrices by just setting in the way that we've been doing all this time uh, f goes to the matrix f i comma j and this is going to be an n by n matrix and obviously the way I've defined it it's going to be upper triangular then AP is isomorphic to the algebra of, to its image, uh, which is a sub-algebra of TNC. What this statement means is that multiplication in AP gets carried over to matrix multiplication among upper triangular uh, matrices. And this map uh, F goes to Fij is an injective linear map. So you can think of this incidence uh, algebra of a finite post at P as a sub algebra of um, upper triangular matrices. 